Well, these are really exciting times uh, for Mountain Movers Church and for the Church of Jesus Christ. But, you know, it's also very dark times as well. Um, you know, today we were going to conclude uh, the marriage series that we had been in, Life Could Be a Dream. Uh, but in light of uh, last night's uh, what attempts to be uh, uh, an assassination on former President Trump, um, we felt like the timing wouldn't be right, and we really need to just focus on what a lot of America is thinking about right now, and that is how dark the days are that we're living in. And we just wanted to address um, really kind of the, just the temperature of our culture right now as a nation and talk for just a moment about what that means for us, the church, the body of Jesus Christ. So um, what we're going to bring to you today is uh, what we call a Saturday night special. That's when God gives you a different message on Saturday night for Sunday morning. And so it's going to be a great message. Anytime God, you know, changes, you know, shifts gears and gives you something new and fresh, it's, it's always, always much better than what we could have ever possibly planned. Uh, so today's message is entitled Time to Shine. So you guys did see the news. And, uh, you know, I just want to say no matter what side of the political line you might find yourself on. Um, it wouldn't have mattered if it was former President, President Trump or President Biden or any other uh, official running you know, for office. It's ridiculous. It, it, it is horrific and it's evil and it's wicked and it should have never happened. And we're living in a, a time where evil is increasing. Lawlessness and wickedness is increasing. And this shouldn't be a surprise to us because Jesus made it very clear. Matthew 24, he talked about how as the time drew near where Jesus would return, and he is returning, that the world would become more lawless. It would become more wicked than ever before. So in other words, what Jesus was saying is as the world grows darker, you're going to realize that I'm coming sooner. Uh, the darker it gets, the sooner I'm coming. And so I want to encourage you today to recognize that, yes, it's a reality. We live in a dark world, but we serve a big God, a mighty big God, and we are the church of Jesus Christ. And that changes things for those of us who are sealed in Christ. You know, some of you all have put your trust in, uh, in elected officials. And I just want to tell you that's the wrong thing to do. There is no man on this planet that is going to save us. There is no hope in this world that, that comes in man. But the hope of this world is found in Jesus Christ and in the body of Christ, his local church. You can't trust elected officials, but you can trust God. And I love, God has many names, but one of my favorite names that God has is Emmanuel because it means God with us. And that is something that we need to always remember and never forget that God has promised that he will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll never turn his back on you. As believers, if you call yourself a believer, then you need to understand that, that God has given us not a spirit of fear, but he's given us power and love and a sound mind. So it's different for those of us who are sealed in Jesus Christ. We are not operate, we do not operate and we are not driven by fear. Psalm 46 and 1 says that God is our refuge. Who is our refuge? He is also our strength and an ever-present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Do you know as a believer that this world is not your home? Yeah. Scripture says that our days are appointed by God. It is his decision when we will leave this earth and when, when we will meet him face to face. That's his decision. So that means that while we are here, we are on assignment. That's right. Our life as a believer belongs to the Lord. It does not belong to us, but it belongs to him. And so as bond servants of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have nothing to fear. Because our, 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 our destiny is sealed in him. It's a win-win rigged fight. If you want to look at a rigged election, this is a rigged election. We are the elected, and we are about to make heaven our home as citizens of heaven because God has chosen us and called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. 
The world is getting dark, but guess what? That means that we as the church of Jesus Christ have the opportunity to shine brighter than we have ever shined before. Amen, amen. Why don't you give God a hand? It was good. You know, we talked about in the update video, we made a statement and that is that we, the church, we are God's plan A. I want you to think about that. We're his plan A. There is no plan B. There was no backup plan. He had one plan and it wasn't a physical building. You see, a lot of times when we think about the church, we think about the location, the physical structure. But guys, God's people, you and I, we are the church. But listen, I want you to think about this. God's people, yes, we are the church, but think about this. It was also his plan. When you think about a plan to share the hope and the gospel message that Jesus came, that he died for your sins, that he rose three days later, that he ascended to the father 40 days after that. When you think about the gospel message, the hope, he left that in our hands. I don't know about you, but like I think that's kind of scary. I think it's kind of scary that humanity who turned our back on God, he put enough faith in us to say, I'm gonna send my one and only son and then I'm gonna leave it to them. I'm gonna empower them. And you know, the fact is, if you've invited Jesus Christ to live inside of your heart, then that means his spirit, the Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of you. So it's not just the church and organization. It is a living organism. When we come together, the church is known as the called together ones. When we come together, we come together. The power and presence of God is here. Why? Because he lives on the inside of each and every one of you. When we come into this house, you feel God's presence. If you walked in today and you're one who hasn't surrendered to your life to Jesus and you're like, I don't even know what I feel. You feel the power and presence of God. Why? Because there's other people around you who are carrying the Holy Spirit on the inside when they walked into this house. Why? Because we are the church of Jesus Christ. Amen? I want to take you to a passage in the book of Luke. This is Jesus teaching in Luke chapter 14. And he is talking about how we are the bride of Christ. He's telling them a story about how one day he's going to bring back the church to the marriage supper of the lamb. And he's giving them this parable. I want you to check this out with me. In verse 16, it says this. A man prepared a great feast and sent out many invitations. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servants to tell all the guests, come, the banquet is ready. But they all began making excuses. How many of you ever invited somebody to church and they made an excuse as to why they couldn't come? Come on now. If you've ever invited anybody, we've all heard excuses, all of them. That's what happens. He says, one said, I just bought a field and I need to go inspect it. Another guy said, hey, I just bought a bunch of oxen. I need to go try them out. Another guy said, oh, ding, ding, ding. I got the best one. Just got married. Sorry, can't make it. Verse 21. So the servant returned and told the master what they had said. His master was furious. He said, go quickly into the streets, into the alleys and the towns, invite the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. After the servant had done this, he reported, check this out, there is still more room. So his master said, go into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge everyone, say everyone, Urge everyone you can find. Why? So that the house will be full. God's desire is that the house would be full, that none would perish, that each and every person would hear the hope and the message of Jesus Christ. Though the world is growing very, very dark, the church will shine even brighter. If you look at Matthew chapter five, Jesus said this very thing in verse 14. He said, you say you, come on, that's you and me. He said, you are the light of the world. He didn't even say himself. He said, we are. Why? Because he dwells on the inside of us, illuminating to the outside. He said, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand. Why? So it can give light to everyone in the house. 
In the same way, let your good deeds shine out. Say that, shine out. For all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father. Man, God has called you as the church, as a believer of Jesus Christ, to be the light in the dark world. As the world grows more and more chaotic and more and more crazy, and people are asking the questions, what in the world? I mean, surely, even last night as this was happening and phones were going off, and people are saying what? This is crazy. Why? Why the evil? Because the spirit of the Antichrist is loosed already on this earth. Ephesians 5 and 8 says, for you and I, we were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. So live as children of the light. I want to show you a quick illustration this morning. You know, a lot of times you may think to yourself, man, I'm just one person. I'm just, what, what am I going to do? What, what, what am I going to say? I'm not even good at talking to people. Like I get terrified. Like I try to, I try to say something to people. You know, listen, when we talk about being the light of the world, we're talking about walking in the presence of almighty God. When you walk into a room and you are full of God's spirit, you don't have to say one word and people can feel God's presence. I'm telling you, it's the truth. When you are full of God's word, the Holy Spirit will speak through you and you will be like, where did that come from? I didn't even know I knew that. It's not about having all the right answers. It's not about freaking out that you got to know all the theology to be able to invite someone to church, that they're going to question you. Guess what? Yeah, you post something on on social, you're going to get about 25% crazy people who are going to blast you for your faith. It happens every time we post. But guess what? We are the light carriers. If we don't shine as the world grows dark, people are destined for hell. Everybody's not saying it, but that's the gospel truth. We have two options for eternity. We either choose Jesus Christ and we put our hope and our faith in him and you are sealed and your eternity is in heaven with God almighty creator of the universe, or you don't choose Jesus, savior of the world. And by default, your eternity is hell. Who's going to tell them if we don't? This morning, I want them to kill the lights, and I want each of you to pull out your cell phone. Broadcast is going to kill me, so it's going to be dark for you online for just a second, but while you're at home, pull your cell phone out too. Now, I want everyone to take your cell phone out, turn your flashlight on, and hold it up. You know, the room was really dark, but I want you to just look around. What happens when you, yourself, shine bright in a dark world. When the church collectively, you're not just one person, maybe I'm not that bright, but collectively when the entire body of Christ begins to shine, look at the impact. You can light up a room where other people can see where there is hope. Guys, you got to begin to get this in your spirit, man. We are the light of the world, a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. We are not going to fear when the world grows dark. You can bring those lights up. This is the time for us to be the church. That's right. Not go to church. It's the time to be the church. That's right. Amen. Peter was having a conversation with Jesus. And Jesus said, I know what everybody else is saying about me. They they have an idea of who I am. But who do you say I am, Peter? And they said, you're the son of God. Come on. You know, that day, Peter knocked it out of the park. Declaring that there is a God in heaven. But not only that, that. God has a son, a one and only son whom he loved so much that he would give his life, taking the the sins of humanity upon himself to die in that wretched grave, only to come up out of the grave in three days, resurrected, brought back to life by the power of almighty God, signifying that we who have died in our sins can be alive with Christ through the power of his resurrection. That is the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come on, make some noise this morning. That's the gospel. The world is dark, but we've got good news. Jesus is alive and he's living inside of the church. We are the light of the world and we are the hope bearers to this world. And it's time that we rise up and we are the church. Never has there been a time more important than right now than, than, than for us to share the light that God has put inside of us. We were driving the other day 
And my daughter said, Dad, did you see that sign? It said, if you, if, try Jesus, and if you decide you don't like him, the devil will always take you back. I want you to think about that, because there are people in your life right now, and there's people in my life that are essentially living for the devil because, by default, because they refuse to choose Christ. My question for you today is, what are you going to do about it? My question for you is, how broken are you about it? Who are these people? Has God put them on your heart? Has he helped you to identify these people? And do you not see the hurt that they have? And do you ever think about what would it be like for that person to spend eternity in hell? I want to encourage you to begin seeing people the way God sees them. God loves every single person on this planet. Red, yellow, black, white, brown, gay, straight, lesbian. He doesn't care. He loves every single person and he died for every single person. And it's our responsibility as the church to bring the hope and the truth of the word of God in God's love to every person we possibly can so we can make heaven crowded and make Jesus famous. It's time for us to be the church. When Jesus and Peter were having that conversation, Jesus said, okay, all right, Peter, it's on this revelation that you've been given, this good news of the gospel, that I am the Christ, I'm the Messiah, and I bring life to those living in death. It's on this rock in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18, on which I will put together my church. A church so expansive, say expansive, Expansive. with energy that not even the gates of hell will be able to come against it. Listen, from the very beginning, since God birthed the church and he sent us into mission mode, his purpose has always been that the church would be expansive. It's never been God's plan or his will that the church would be stagnant or stale or declining. God's vision for God's church is to grow. God's vision is for us to bloom and blossom and reach as many people who are living in the dark as we possibly can while we are here on assignment. It is God's will for his church to expand. It is God's will for this church to expand. And I'm telling you, he is doing it at Mountain Movers Church. He's been doing it for so long and he's going to continue to do it. And I just want to share with you some things that God has been stirring in our hearts as your pastors. Y'all, our heads are spinning and they have been for the last couple months. And I cannot wait for us as a church family to see all that God has in store over these next few months and into this next year. I'm telling you, God is going to blow the lid off this thing. I was in prayer one morning, had my prayer journal, and I always write down what God shows me. And I write down the names of people uh, th- who have needs in the church. And I'm just constantly praying over people in the church. And as I was in prayer, it was at the conclusion of my quiet time with God. And the Lord just spoke this phrase so loud and so clear. And then he told me to write it down. It was these two words, rapid expansion, rapid expansion. And it wasn't long after I had written that down. It was so clear. And I saw expansion in so many ways, not just reaching more people, but, but with the buildings and with ministries and with land and all, just everything you can imagine that is encompassed in that phrase, expansion, I saw it. And it was multiple things. And it wasn't long after that that a letter was put on my desk. Misty said, hey, you really need to read this. Um, one, of the, one of our beloved church members uh, had received a vision from God. Uh, at night, uh, one of the Saturday night prayer meetings, and God showed him this. I don't have time to read the entire letter, but I want to read just a snippet at the very end and just show you how incredible God is and how exciting this is because it's all just confirmation. In this vision, he saw a lot of clouds and a large circular cylinder around the church buildings that was clear of any clouds or other obstructions from the ground and up to heaven. And then I saw the Son of Man standing within the cylinder looking down at the church as angels were flooding down from heaven and occupying the cleared area within the cylinder. And the border of the cylinder was itself marked by clouds. Then the clouds expanded the cylinder rapidly 
such as an atomic bomb mushroom cloud rolls out in every direction, and as the clouds passed an area, it became clear of any clouds or other obstructions up to heaven, thereby claiming the cleared area for the church. I marveled at the rapid expansion of the area being claimed for the church and thought of how much Mountain Movers Church has grown in the last few years since we began attending. And the Lord dropped this in my spirit. You haven't seen anything yet. Guys, God is on the move at Mountain Movers Church. And he's on the move in his church. And we get to be a part of the bigger vision and the bigger picture of these last days as Jesus is preparing to return. So what does that mean for us? It means the world is dark and it's time for us to be the church. I want to encourage you like never before every day to grow in your faith, to get in your word, to get around other believers on a regular basis, strengthening and encouraging one another. You just saw a beautiful illustration of how powerful we are together. We're better together, right? But I wanna especially encourage each and every one of us online and in this house to begin giving like never before, to begin serving like never before, to begin sharing your faith like never before. You saw that beautiful camp video right? You saw all those kids running around here, but you also saw a lot of adults. You saw a lot of people serving. I think about 92 adults were volunteering, making that happen and teenagers as well. And it took a lot of finances to make that happen. You guys, it takes money and it takes manpower to do ministry. It's just the reality of the world that we live in. And that's the way that God prescribed it. That, that's the design that he gave us. So what I'm saying is it's dark. Let's be the light. Let's be the church in these last days. Because you know what? This life is a vapor. It's here and then it's gone. And before you know it, we're all going to be standing before the Father. And we're going to be giving an account to the time and the talent and the treasure that we had while we were here to do what he told us to do in obedience to him. Our lives are nothing more than but just an opportunity to please God. I want to share right before we close up just a just a little tidbit of some of the expansion that has already taken place. We were given the opportunity and we seized the moment and the Lord has blessed us with five more acres of land to the east of this church. Isn't that awesome? So we're expanding our space so more people can have a place to experience real life change. And if you come up to me after church today and you say, pastor, what are we going to do with the land? I'm going to say, I have no idea. But you know, that's been the way this has gone since the beginning of this church. Just when we think we know what the plan is, he helps us understand you don't know what the plan is. It's my plan. It's not your plan. And so we've learned as pastors to just get out of his way. And right now we know that for some reason he wants us to have land. We don't know why that is. We have ideas, but it's only a matter of time and the Lord will show us because this is his church and this is his property and we're his people. And so when the time comes, we'll be ready and we'll be able to move forward. It's, a, it's amazing how good God is. You know, because of the faithfulness of those who trust God and the tithe and give, we had the money to buy that in cash. Yeah, amen. amen. You can amen. give God praise. Amen. I mean, come on, somebody. Amen. All for the glory of God. Right. So let's pray today as we head out. I want to bless you, but I I just pray, God, over your church, over this family. God, we're living in dark days, but you said it would be like this. God, I pray that you would stir our hearts by the power of your Holy Spirit, that each of us would live out the precise purpose and calling that you have for our lives. I pray in these last days, God, that we would be your church, that we would shine in the dark, that we would be a giving church, a serving church, a sharing church, to spare no expense, God, to make Jesus famous and rescue people from hell. Lord, I love you, and we love this church, and we pray your blessings on this church family, and I pray that we would just be so obedient and that more than anything else, we would just want to please you in everything that we do. 
with heads bowed and eyes closed, you heard today about the gospel. It is the good news of Jesus Christ. It is how we make heaven our home. It's the reality that Jesus is God. He's God's son and he's God. And it's only through him we can be saved because he died on the cross for our sins. He paid the price for us and he stood in our place so that we wouldn't have to die in our sins. And if you want to be alive in Christ, if you want to experience heaven as your home and be sealed in him for an eternity, I want to encourage you today to ask God to forgive you of your sins, to believe in your heart that Jesus is the son of God, to confess him, to be Lord of your life and commit your life to him from this day forward according to his word. With heads bowed and eyes closed, we're gonna pray a prayer according to that, that plan, uh, that salvation plan. And I just wanna encourage those of you in this room, if you're making that decision to believe it with all your heart as we pray this together as a church family. Repeat these words after me. Father, please forgive me of my sins. Cleanse my heart and make me new. I believe Jesus is the son of God. I confess him to be Lord of my life. Help me God to be different, to be bold, to be loud, to be fearless in these last days. In Jesus name. Amen.